Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. God bless you. Grace and peace, everybody. And welcome to Worship with Light Builders Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. We're grateful for it. In God good? I said, in God good? I said, in God good? Thank God for Pastor William McDowell and his tremendous declarations today. Thank God, my God, through Christ, we are victorious. Through Christ, we have the victory. Through Christ, we're walking in the power of the Spirit, and good change is coming. Why don't you share? Take the opportunity to share this broadcast. We are on the air live, amen, on our simulcast to bring God great glory. I got a word today. Hallelujah. And I'm faithfully giving God praise because he is worthy of it all. Why don't you come with us now and let us call on God. Father, thank you that this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. We're grateful for it. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for waking us up in our right mind with the activity of our limbs, food, shelter, clothing, the mind to serve you, the desire to serve you, the will to serve you. Now, Lord, have your way today. Have your way today. Have your way today. Have your way today. We declare through Christ we are victorious. Through Christ we have the victory. So, Lord, you arise and every enemy be scattered. We triumph in Christ. We stand on your word, and Lord, we give you praise. And again, we declare, God, you arise, and every enemy be scattered in Jesus' name. Lord God, have your way, and be glorified in Jesus' name. Somebody put your hands together. Give God praise. Yes, we are in worship. Yes, we are in praise. Yes, we give in glory to our living God. He is the awesome God. Pastor Al is coming at this time to minister under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let God arise and every enemy be scattered. Baby, you look beautiful this morning. Thank, Thank God for you. Hallelujah. Sing to the power come down. Amen. Please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. He's worthy. How do you know that the name of the Lord is a great name, a powerful name? an awesome name and we worship that great name come on and just worship him with me worship him wherever you are right now worship the lord let's worship him giving him the glory we give him the honor and we give him the praise because he is the excellent god he is worthy there is none other like him we worship him we glorify that name yes, Jesus. to call your name is something we cannot explain the heavens when we proclaim your great name your great name we love to, we love to call it's something we cannot explain the heavens when we Power. Come on. 
things change when the wind calls your name. You know it. Things change. Yes, they do. I said things change when the wind calls. Things change. Yes. Come on.
Therefore, I declare, I declare, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear the word of the living God. And as a result of what I hear today, somebody declare with me, I'm going to leave here better than I came here in Jesus' name. Beloved, let's jump right in. My God, beloved, I want to talk today from the topic, cherish what we have. I know I talked about it last week, but let's consider this part two. Cherish what we have. But I mean, we know that things are going along today, and I realize that I may say this again in the text, that some of us are tired of this coronavirus. I would dare say all of us are. All of us are ready to get back to life as we knew it. But let me declare to you, life has changed. Now, it's something that was said, and I believe Pastor William McDowell said it earlier, and I want to piggyback on it. We're not going to find God in where we were. We're going to find him where he is. God allowed this pandemic to change us for the better, to rid us of certain things that were no longer essential, to rid us of certain practices that are not going to take us to the level of his glory that he's ordained for us to go to. So therefore, we must understand that God is calling for us at a greater level. And we, as a part of going to that greater level, must learn to cherish what we have. Yes, certain people have passed away. We don't rejoice that, and that is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about we got to do away with the people that went on. I don't know why they left, but I do know I'm still here, and God has something for me to do in this generation. I wish you would declare the same. I'm still here, and God has something for me to do in this generation. Yes, we're sad for friends, sad for some family members that have gone on, but beloved, I am still here. So I wipe my eyes and I lift my head and I declare I have something great to offer for this generation. I'm praying for those that family members have died. I'm praying for family members of mine and yours that are struggling with this right now. But let us not forget that God has a call on our lives. Let us not get lost in the fact that others are fighting and we're going to pray for them and be strengthened. Amen. And we know we have to be strengthened ourselves. Are you hearing me? We must cherish everything. Somebody help me repeat that. We must cherish everything. Hallelujah. So I'm sure that I'm not the only one who has become more grateful for small things. Grateful to live. Grateful to take a breath. Grateful to have the ability to have the walking, the talking, and, and able to be in the land of the living. Somebody say, I'm grateful. My God, beloved. And we have to learn that while we are grateful, hear me, beloved, when this crisis ends, this is my goal today. I want to ensure that we don't think the same about what has been reserved in our lives that's most beneficial, that's most valuable. Come on, hear me. That is to stick around long term. Again, I say, crisis has a way of shedding away what you don't need. Crisis has a way of pulling away from you what will no longer be necessary in your assignment. Can I just digress a brief moment? Y'all know I like war pictures. And in the picture saving Private Ryan, they went to get this, uh, this young man who was not a fighter, who was not a warrior. He was a war correspondent. His weapon was a typewriter. And when they went to retrieve the young man, he tried to bring his typewriter along. And, 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 and uh, the lieutenant, the, the leader, captain, said, look at here. You don't need that. And he said, well, how am I going to do my job? He held up a pencil. <laughs> Beloved, where you are going, God has already equipped you 
where you are going. God is calling you to stand and rely on what it is you need and not what you lost. So beloved, what I want to do is cause you to start being more grateful and cherish what you have. We must learn in this season, my God, to practice cherishing what we have. My God. So all let's talk about cherishing. Let me define what cherish means. And we're going to praise God real good. To cherish means to care for something or someone deeply, lovingly. I'm taking my time for a reason. Stay with me. To hold it dearer than usual. To be completely devoted to it and hold it in highest esteem. To be completely devoted to it and hold it in highest esteem. Now, I know some got a little upset with me because of what I said last week about Easter. I can't apologize. For years, we've been mixing paganism with the reality of the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Don't turn me off. Where I'm going, let's start with what we are going through requires the stability of truth. It requires us not to water down the powerful life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and his soon coming with some egg or some bunny. I know we use it to play with the kids, give them a basket. My goodness, I used to get baskets myself until my parents learned better. I used to get baskets and eggs and we used to get a big Mary Sue East egg giving you props. Still good. I just won't eat you the same. Come on. We used to get those big things, my God, in Sunday school. But we know better now. We cannot mix the sacred with the secular in times of crisis. One is going to do you good. The other is going to become a distraction. I would dare say with all surety that truth will do you good. Paganism and lies have become a distraction. Y'all better hear me back to hear me now. Beloved, I need you to understand that on last Sunday, we discussed the fact that we have the truth. Got to cherish it. How truth is a major stabilizer during unsettling times. We discussed how truth must not be watered down. My God, and the truth is Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Can I get a witness here? So let's go on in this message because I want you to cherish the truth that Jesus came. He lived. He suffered. He bled. He died. But he rose again after three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. He rose from the grave with all power. The stone was rolled away and he got up. My God, and we also rise up. My God, beloved, that's the truth. And Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Like never before, we got to cherish this truth. Can somebody help me say, I cherish this truth. Jesus lived. He suffered. He bled. He died. But he rose again with all power. And he's coming again. Oh, yes, he is. So, beloved, I've got to learn to cherish that truth. I have to cherish the truth that he came to give me life and that more abundantly. I have to cherish the truth that he's given me power over the works of the devil. i got to cherish the truth that he has told me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. i got to cherish the truth that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. No longer can I mix the truth with lies and deception, custom and tradition. It is time for us to rise and walk in kingdom. Can somebody shout, walk in kingdom? Can somebody declare, walk in kingdom? My God, here are a few things. Let me let me calm down. I, I got to work with this this morning. We're going to praise God. So, beloved, I want to give you a few things I want to suggest that we ought to cherish. Number one thing, we got to cherish the fact that we have a great salvation. 
Now, 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 last week, we told you to cherish the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. What did he come to do? He came to seek and save the lost. So we must cherish our salvation. What you talking about, Bishop? Cherish the fact that you were saved. Too many people are taking that for granted. Too many folk are taking for granted the price that was paid for your salvation. Jesus again lived, bled, died after suffering and rose to save you. You are saved. You are redeemed by the power of God if you accepted his sacrifice and his gift. No, everybody is not saved. Is it the will of God that everybody be saved? Yes. You must accept the fact that you are a lost and regenerate, uh, unregenerate sinner without the love of God, the power of God. Don't get it twisted. God loves you, whether you're saved or not. But if you're not saved, you don't belong to him. My God, if you're not saved, you're going to hell. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. The Bible says only the righteous shall see God. Who are the righteous? Those who God has made righteous. Who has been made righteous? We've been made righteous by the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By a substitutionary death on the cross of Calvary. There is no other name whereby men can be saved but the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, come on. Let me understand this preacher. Are you trying to say that Jesus is the only way to God? Yes. There may be other roads to get to Jesus. I may have come through the road of drug addiction. I may have come through the road of promiscuity. I may have come through the road of abuse and neglect. But when I come through that road, at the end of that road is one door. And the door is Jesus. He is the only way to God. I didn't say it. He said it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what he said. He died to prove it. He bled to prove it. He rose to seal it. So we must cherish this salvation. Can I talk scripture? Luke chapter 19, verse 10. This speaks of the purpose he came. Above all else, to join man back to God and God back to man. For the Bible says that for the Son of Man in Luke 19 10 is come to seek and to save that was lost. You were lost. I was lost. And until we acknowledge it, we can't be saved. I don't just walk up in and say, Lord, you love me. Let me in. I got to acknowledge my condition. I was lost in sin. I needed a savior. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Let me give you another scripture. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Man, you narrow-minded. No, I'm talking about the truth. The word of God declares, therefore in Hebrews 2, 1 through 4, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For... If the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Hear me. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Don't turn me off. Stay with me. Got two more. God also bearing them witness. Both with signs and wonders. I'm about to tell you. And I prophetically concur. That God is about to wipe this coronavirus. This COVID-19. By the work of his mighty hand. And all will know that God did it. Others may have plans and devices that may come to deceive 
There are many theories out there. I don't care where the virus came from. As quickly as it's come, it's leaving the same way it came in. My God, powerful is going out with a whimper because God is about to do signs and wonders. Hallelujah. I declare it right now by signs and wonders and confirm them. My God, God also bearing witness again with both signs, hallelujah, and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Let me stop right now and feel the Holy Ghost unction. Lord, breathe fresh breath. I don't care who's on a ventilator. I don't care who's short of breath. I don't care who's suffering with a dry cough. I don't care who's suffering with a fever. Fresh breath. Breathe on them. Breathe on them. Breathe on them in the name of Jesus. The miracle work of power is cursing through your body right now. I declare you ought to lift your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I just felt that. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. Both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Ah, salvation is what Jesus came to give us. This pandemic makes me even more cherish the fact that I am saved. Oh yeah. There are things that come with this great salvation. Oh yes, the blood was shed to save my soul. I'm pacing myself because I feel this. The blood was shed to make me whole. The blood was shed to cleanse me from unrighteousness. The blood was shed to wash away all my sin. The blood was shed to heal my sickness, disease, and infirmity. Why do I know this? Because the Bible says he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace is upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. Healed from sin, healed from depravity, healed from sickness and disease. He does a total healing job because he came to save. I've acknowledged my sin. Let me talk about me. I've taken responsibility for my sin. I've repented and turned from my sin. I've denounced my whole lifestyle and I'm living and I give glory to the Lord Jesus because he is now seated on the throne of my heart. Come on now. I wonder how many out there that are hearing and viewing me can say the same thing that I'm saved and I cherish my salvation. I'm saved and I've been bought with a price. I'm saved and I've been blessed to be a blessing. Can somebody say hallelujah? Oh, I'm saying, let me calm down. God have mercy. I'm saved, I'm saved. My God, beloved, there are people out there listening to me right now. My God, beloved, and some think it's strange of me speaking about salvation today. My God, but I know and still know and I'm talking to people that have been in church all their lives. Never confess Jesus. They confess religion. They serve on the usher board. They serve, my God, in various auxiliaries. They sing on the choir. Let me say it. Some even preach. But they've never been saved. They have never accepted the life, death, burial, resurrection of our Lord Jesus. They've accepted religion, but they have no relationship. Oh, Jesus said it himself. Man, I got to hit this hard. Oh, he said it himself. That many shall come in that day and say, Lord, did we not sing in your name? Heal in your name. Cast out devils in your name. Have we not, my God, done great works in your name? And Jesus will say, yes, you did. But you must depart from me because I never knew you. I don't want to do what I do based on religion. I have a relationship because Jesus saved me. Ah, hallelujah. He came to seek and save the lost. Let me move on. My God, beloved. My God, some have never let Jesus take 
lordship at the seat of their heart. Some have never made what he did valuable. They're hanging out on the fringes somewhere. My God, some have tried to work their way in. Some have tried to do deeds their way in. But there is no way to God but to Jesus Christ. You got to accept him. You got to believe him. You got to receive him. We can't substitute him with money, works, good name. You got to take the power of God and accept the sacrifice of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I call on all who are saved to cherish the fact that you're saved more than you ever have before. Can somebody lift your hands and thank God that one day, I don't know if it was a Friday, like me, December 9th, 1972. I don't know who in here have been saved and got saved on a Sunday, got saved on a Monday or Tuesday. I'm not trying to do the mighty clouds of joy thing, but you know your day. You know when you gave your heart to Jesus. Now, more than ever, you got to cherish that great salvation. Number two, I told you I got two more. My God, we have to cherish the promise of his presence. One supreme. We cherish that Jesus lived, suffered, bled, died, and rose again. Now we must cherish our salvation that he came to give us. Number two, we must cherish the promise of his presence. I cherish the fact that God is with me. And not only that, I'm with him. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to contain myself. I cherish the fact that he didn't leave me alone, especially not now. Friends have died. I've had to wipe my eyes. God have mercy. Family members have crossed over. I've had to wipe my eyes. But he has not left me. Oh, my God, he has not forsaken me. He has not pushed me away. Somebody ought to thank God for his presence. He is with me. Yay, though I walk. Oh, come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on, child. Come on, behave yourself. My God, beloved, look at this. Look at this. I got this scripture. I might as well say it. Yea, Psalm 23 and 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou, God, art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they cover me. Thou hast used thy staff to comfort me. Let me go a verse further. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. God is with me. Ah, oh God have mercy. Don't y'all feel him out there? It's something about the word and the truth of God. You can feel him. The devil substitute coming together. I'll talk about it in a minute. But don't you feel him where you are right now? Can somebody just pause and give God praise because he's with you? I'm almost done. But can you praise God that he's not left you, that he's not forsaken you? Come on, lift up them hands. Come on, give God glory. Man, I feel like leaping for joy. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. You have not left me. You have not left me. My God, 1 Kings 8, 57 declares the Lord our God be with us. He was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. Oh God, 1 Kings 8, 57. Let's skip down to this very familiar one. My God in Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Lord God, help me, Lord. Oh, I love him today. Oh, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, for he has said, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Lord, have mercy. I have brought you back from the slave market of sin. I have called thee by name. 
thou art mine. Oh God have mercy. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, oh God, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You don't believe it? Ask them three Hebrew boys who were thrown in the fiery furnace, but the Lord was with them. Ask Daniel who was thrown in the lion's den. My God, but God shut the mouth of the lions. God is with me in coronavirus. God is with me in COVID-19. God is with me in the midst of furlough. God is with me in the midst of trouble. God is with me. I don't know where my check coming again. God is with me. I got that $1,200 and it's still gone already. But God is with me. Who am I preaching to that he's greater than a stimulus check? Greater than every job I could ever work. Greater than social assistance. God never left me. Oh, God have mercy. I'm intentionally reading these texts because I trust by now that you understand I'm trying to encourage you. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Cherish his presence. Ah, oh, God. Maybe right now, Lord, I got to close. You're feeling that this pandemic and all the fallout my God has, has lasted too long. I watch some of the news because I've limited my news watching because I'm working on something and I don't want to continue to be fed by bad news when I know that God said this is about to come to an end. But I saw some people still going to the beach and walking around, my God, like they don't have a care in the world. I understand that some have questions and doubts about the origin of this virus but the bible says obey the law of the land by way of what god said he said that he will give us righteous leadership that will direct us we can't walk around and be presumptuous God is with me and he's with me where he directs me. I'm not fearful because I wear a mask. I'm not fearful because I shut her in. I know even those that gotta go to work, gotta get out, gotta take care of the sick, gotta do their job. Let me encourage you and say, God is with you. Cherish his presence. Cherish his presence. Oh God, cherish it. I know this has been going on a long time. Some of y'all tired of them four walls. Come on, just step outside when we're finished worship. And thank God, shout to the top of your voice. Thank you, Lord, that you're with me. Take a big breath of fresh air. Thank you, Lord, that you're with me. Thank you, Lord. If you can walk in your community, go out of your community. But declare God is with me. Hebrews, come. Mm. Jesus, ha, hallelujah. Oh God, Hebrews chapter 13, verse five. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with some, such things as you have. God is with us. God is for us. God will guide us. He cared for us. Yeah, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Can somebody tweet that? Type that? Declare that? God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Whew. I got one more and we're going to close. Heaven, help me finish this. I feel the praise coming on. I don't want to stop dancing by myself. But can somebody for 10 seconds, oh, give God some great glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. You're with me. You're with me. You're with me. Mm. Hallelujah. Last thing I want to tell you, you got to cherish. God have mercy. We got to learn and practice to cherish 
the body of Christ. Whoa, glory. We got to cherish the body of Christ. Come on, y'all say something here. May I suggest that you take the time sometime today to read all of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But for now, before I close, I just want to focus on one verse. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Oh, Lord, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Can I say it again? Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. I'm so glad for this great salvation that I cherish and I hold dear. I'm so glad <laughs> for the fact that the Lord is with me and I cherish his presence. But I've got to close right now by declaring how much I cherish the fellowship of the saints. I'm sorry. I know that some of you before this pandemic have not come to church thought it was an intrusion in your schedule. Thought it was something wrong with somebody expecting you to come to church. Thank God for streaming right now. And I don't undervalue streaming because somebody right now is watching me in California. Somebody right now is watching me in the Caribbean. Somebody right now is watching me in Europe somewhere. I thank God for this vehicle of this great ability to spread the gospel over streaming. But it ain't nothing like coming among the saints. It ain't nothing like getting among the house of God and the people of God. I cherish how God calls us to gather together and the Bible said he inherits and inhabits the praise of his people. He said where two or three are gathered together in my name touching and agreeing on the same thing he said I will be in your midst. I wonder who here cherishes the fact that the Bible said in Hebrews 10.25 to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together with other believers as we see the time approaching. One of the things that I believe the Lord has allowed to happen is that we once again cherish the times we get together with God's people. I don't know about you, but let's go back, oh God, to when I got saved. Oh God, I remember back in the early 70s, a revival hit on Copley Road, 3400 Copley Road. In the church I grew up in, Bishop Monroe Saunders Sr. was my pastor. First United Church was where I went to get my nurturing God. But I wasn't saved. But I remember a revival hit in 1972. And it went on for a whole month. Young people were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And at that time, I had the, the chicken pox. And I could not come out Outside. Can I testify? But at the end of the chicken box, I remember I heard my friends were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I heard that the ones that were doing all the dirty stuff were speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. I heard that the people of God were being healed, delivered, and set free. I got tired of hearing it. I begged mommy I don't have the chicken pox no more. My itching is gone. All I got is a little bit of scabbiness. Can I go to church? Oh my God. I got among the saints. 
My God, they were a little younger and they were a little older. But I got among the saints. And I didn't wait for the altar call. I did not want to just hear how others were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I wanted Jesus. I needed Jesus. I had been suspended from school three times before I was in the fifth grade. I was on my way in games and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But the Lord caught hold of me and I got among the saints. Who God, I was the last of the young people that got filled with the Holy Ghost on that week after that month-long revival. I'm so glad that I got among the saints. Ooh, I'm so glad that I got among the people of God. Who am I preaching to? That there's deliverance in the presence of God. There's healing in the presence of God. Come and go with me into my Father's house. Because there's joy in the Father's house. Beloved, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I mentioned some places where my voice is being heard. But right now, I cherish being among the saints. Somebody once said, you don't miss the water till the well went dry. I'm calling on some of you who've been lazy, not coming to the house of God, finding other excuses, doing other things. Yeah, you got streaming, but I believe when this pandemic is over, oh Lord, folk are gonna be dancing in the in the parking lot. Hey, folk are gonna be rejoicing when their feet hit the door. Oh, I feel this thing because we've learned to be glad when they say unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Beloved, I cherish being around the saints. Oh, man, I better cut this. Oh, God, my time is going. But I feel like telling somebody, I realize that social distancing is the rule of the day and discretion is the right order. But I look forward to this season of separation ending. I pray that everybody take gathering together more seriously now than you ever have. There is comfort among the saints. There is joy among the body of Christ. No more division. No more schism. No more stupidity. We have to cherish the body of Christ. I got to close. But once again, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey, glory. Once again. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh God. Once more. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm grateful for the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the soon coming of Jesus. Once again, I'm grateful for my salvation. I'm saved, blood bought, blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, yet old school, fire baptized, and that with a mighty burning flame. And I'm not running from anything. I'm completing my assignment. I, I'm grateful for the presence of God. And I'm grateful for the body of Christ and I cherish it now more than ever. Who am I talking to? You may be watching me by yourself, but you're not alone. God is with you. I got more message, but I'm out of time. God, you may be watching me from my hospital room, but God is with you. You may be watching me, my God, from a jail cell, but God is with you. You may be surrounded by people with coronavirus and you might be a health care worker. May see this now or later. But God is with you. I'm going to take a bold step in praise God and believe God that no more people that are giving care to the sick will die. No more 
those that are essential workers, bus drivers, grocery store workers, postal delivery, any delivery at all, none will contract this virus and die. I decree and declare healing over those who are sick, healing over those that are diseased. By the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not alone. You are not alone. Who will agree with me that today is the turn? Yeah, you've been saying that, preacher. You've been saying as quickly as it go, came, as quickly as it go. And I say it again. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and he will not trust. Can you give me three more minutes? Come on, just three. I see the time. I'm talking to you that's not saved. You're sitting there, and every time the altar call is made, you run out the door. You gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta go somewhere. Today is your day to give your heart to Jesus. It's for him polite to point this. Today is your day to give your heart to Jesus. I'm talking to you. You've been running from God too long. Been playing. And you know he called you. Get up! And do what God told you to do. Give him your life. Put him on the seat of your heart. For sure, repent of your sin. And let God arise. And every enemy be scattered. You that feel alone, he's with you. He's with you. Stop being depressed. <clears throat> I bind the spirit of depression. I bind the spirit of depression. I declare your time is up. Get off the people of God in their minds. And Lord, lift a standard of peace. I declare it. Everybody, now is the time. Drop your prayer requests. On the stream, wherever you're watching from, in the comments, begin to write your prayer requests. Even write your praise reports. Somebody may need it to read later. Don't look at this time lightly that you have to encourage somebody. Lord, I pray for those that are sick, those that are bound, those that are shackled. Loose every bondage and set your people free. In Jesus' name. Give God glory. Give God praise. Give God honor. Because he alone is good. If you're not saved, you want somebody to pray with you, you don't want to just write down your request. Email us at LBC Ministry. LBC Ministry at Yahoo.com. Call us if you will. At 443-776-0255. We'll call you back. People are waiting to pray with you. If there's no call back, then email us. The lines have somehow been interrupted. Email us at lbcministry at yahoo.com. Beloved, we got to have these prayer requests. I see these requests coming in. Yeah, we got them. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I may not call them out online, but keep them coming. Keep them coming. Come on. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Stand with me. Come on. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. Come on. Come on. Let God be glorified. Let God arise. Let every enemy be scattered. Right now. Right now. Right now, give God your heart. Come on, I just want a little bit of music in the background. I didn't mean to disappear. I'm back. But I need you to give all to God. Come on. Come on. Come on, give it all. Give it all. Give it all. Lord, have mercy. You know, I got to be sound man and preacher. But it's okay. <laughs> God is so faithful. God is so wonderful. 
God is so faithful. God is so worthy. God is so absolutely awesome. Hallelujah. 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 God is so good. God is so faithful. God is so awesome. Give him your life. I'm, I'm giving more time because these prayer requests are coming. That's why I'm doing it. I see you. I see you. Yeah. People are asking for prayer. That's why I, I'm not stalling. They're asking for prayer. Yeah. Folk are saying, man of God, pray for me. Pray for me. People want prayer. And I see these requests. Yes. Yes, I see you. Yes, I see you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on now. Do this thing right. It's time. It's time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is faithful. God is awesome. He's worthy of praise. Give him all. 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 Give him everything. Give him everything. Come on, just a few more moments. A few more moments. I see these requests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just give him all. Give him everything. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Last but not least, our tithe and our offering, amen. We believe we're giving church. And I've said this before, let me say it again. I know that we're not having worship in a building, but ministry continues. Ministry continues. And I want us to make sure that we're sowing into ministry. But more than that, I want you to give with your future in mind. I'm not talking gimmick. I'm not talking trick. You got to give with your future in mind. Because one day this pandemic will end. One day you will go back to work. And one day you will be in a better situation than you are right now. We sow seed. We give tithe and offering. There's an adapter down there. It's green top. We sow seed. We give tithe and offering. It's on the floor right there, son. Amen. And uh, we, we give tithe and offering because we believe in the God that will return, that will bless, that will profit us. And I don't want anybody to take it for granted. I don't want anyone to take for granted on the side, right there on the side of the volume. On the other side. Yeah, 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 the big one. I want you to be able to give. I want you to give. Your tithe and your offering, you can give by way of PayPal. You, you don't have to be a member of PayPal, but we trust PayPal. We trust PayPal. Let's turn it down a little bit. We, we trust PayPal. We trust PayPal. You know, and we want you to be in a posture to give. When you go on PayPal, or our link will be put up on our screen. Go to that link and use LBC Ministry at Yahoo.com as your vein to give securely. Also, I would ask that the address be put up for those that may want to mail it. I would ask that address be put up now, that box, amen, that we have for those that don't trust the mail uh, by way of uh, electronic mail or those giving apps. Please put up that address so we can see. People may want to mail in their seed. But we take regularly online or by PayPal because it's secure and it's never failed us. Again, lbcministry at yahoo.com and when you go on PayPal, give through that. God bless you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that by the Spirit of God that you would give Jesus your heart and cherish the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the soon coming of our Lord. Cherish your salvation. Cherish the presence of God. He's with you. And cherish the gathering of the body of Christ. God bless you. We pray that you were blessed today. We're going to stick around just a little bit with some good music. We're going to be praying for you while we're sitting around. We not just got this music on 
just to have it. <laughs> no, we're praying for you. God bless. Now may the grace of God and the sweet command of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through and by Christ Jesus. Beloved, we love you. Grace and peace be unto you. God dwells in the midst of Light Builders Church. God dwells in the midst of a blessed community. Wherever you are, your family, God bless you.